Oh, great. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. In this video, I wanna go over some of the top problems that we've come to find on this Ford Flex. Let's get into it. Now, if you find that you're having a starting issue or a starting then stalling condition on your Ford Flex, the first thing that you wanna do is check for power leading down to that fuel pump. So just go ahead and make your way underneath the hood to the fuse box. We'll lift this up and get this out of the way. On the bottom side here, there's a little legend tells you which fuse you're looking for. We're looking for fuse number 56. It's right up in this area. If you were to look at it right up in here in the fuse box, it's the green 30 amp fuse. So what you wanna do is make sure that you have the key in the off position removed from the ignition. Now what I'm gonna do is just use some long nose pliers and I'll pull this right out of here. Once I have it out, we'll give it a quick inspection. Now that you know where the fuse is, the next thing you're going to want to do is test for power on both ends of that fuse. You can do that by using a small test light. We'll just hook this up to ground and then test each prong of that fuse. Come right up along here. Assuming this lights up, that means you have power on one side. We'll go over to the other. Same thing, I have power on both sides. If your fuse is good like this one right here, I'm gonna show you where to look. Let's make our way back here behind the passenger side rear seat. Remove that trim panel and you're going to find your fuel pump driver module. That's this area right here. This is the most common culprit if you are having an issue where your vehicle either did not start or it started and then stalled out over time. Right here. As you can tell, it's fairly simple. Go ahead and disconnect it, remove the mounting hardware, and there it is, friends. Let's put this back together. Now for our second problem, we wanna talk about your automatic climate control speed control unit. Essentially your blower motor resistor. Now if you have automatic climate control in your vehicle, you understand the fact that it's going to try to make sure that you have the proper temperature inside your passenger compartment at all times. So it is probable that it's going to increase the temperature and decrease the temperature but it's also going to control the fan speed itself. That's the amount of air getting forced out of the vents. Now, of course, this will fluctuate a little bit, but if you are in a situation where it didn't actually need to be changing the vent speeds, but it kept changing, that usually comes down to your blower motor resistor or climate control unit. So if you found that while you were driving down the road, the fan speed kept increasing and decreasing, increasing and decreasing rapidly, Go ahead and make your way behind that glove box and replace the blower motor resistor. You can check us out at 1AAuto.com, get it shipped to you fast and free. Now let's move along to talking about our third problem. This one comes down to the center console latch. On these vehicles, when this is in the down position, it should remain locked so it can't come bouncing up while you're driving down the road. Maybe you hit a bump or two, you don't want this thing just flopping around. Now what can possibly happen is internally right here, it loses its spring retention, or even the little hook down along this area breaks off, in which case this won't be able to latch properly. To fix this issue, you would wanna go ahead and replace the latch assembly right along here. When you do that, it should be under spring tension, and when you push it down, it should remain locked until you lift up on the handle again. For our fourth problem, we're going to talk about caliper bracket issues. Now, as far as the calipers themselves, they're what's responsible for stopping the vehicle. Every time you step on that brake pedal, it's going to force fluid down through the lines, eventually making its way to one of your calipers. The front calipers on this vehicle actually have an issue with the original caliper brackets. That's the bracket that mounts directly to the steering knuckle, and the caliper actually mounts directly to that. Now, the reason why these calipers go bad is actually due to the brackets themselves. And that's the part of the caliper that mounts directly to the steering knuckle. There's a revised version of these caliper brackets, and of course they come with brand new calipers. If you are experiencing issues with your caliper, some of the symptoms that you might happen to find would be a screeching or a groaning noise coming from the brakes. Otherwise, if you were to happen to take a quick look, you might find that one side of the brakes is worn more than the other. They're not wearing evenly. Either way, if you found that you were having one of these symptoms, you want to give it a quick inspection, check to see if you have the revised version of the calipers with the brand new caliper brackets. If not, replace the calipers with the brackets 
And of course, if the pads and rotors were worn poorly, you can go ahead and replace those at the same time. Door ajar. Door shut. Still says door ajar. Well, that's not right. Looks like we know our fifth problem. This one comes down to your door latch. Now, each one of your doors will have a latch, and that latch has a couple responsibilities. The first responsibility is to make sure that the door is shut, so it's not rattling around, or even worse, opening up on you while you're driving down the road. In this particular instance, it has another responsibility. It actually communicates with the vehicle's computer and lets it know whether or not the door is open or shut. And that's where this problem comes in. It's possible for this latch to miscommunicate with the computer. So even though the door is in the complete shut position, the computer still thinks that it's open and it pops up that door ajar light. So if you found that you were having this issue, the first thing you would want to do is go ahead and take off the door panel, take off the wiring, and just give it a close inspection. If you see any corrosion, that could be the problem. If you don't see corrosion, more than likely it's a latch issue. If you need this or any other part, check us out at 1aauto.com. Okay friends, so that's pretty much what I've got for you for some of the top problems that we've come to find on this Ford Flex. If you have one of these vehicles and you've had some problems of your own, talk about it in the comments section because we always love to hear from you. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on that like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.